What is going on, everybody? My name is Jesse, a.k.a. your very own one and only Shot town Smart. And today, we're going to get into the Monday Night Raw review. We're going to change things up today, guys. We're going to do things a little bit differently and trying out a couple of different things here and there. And I've decided to go with a pre-recorded review. It just seems that that is the format that you guys would much, much rather have due to the success of yesterday's video. So we're going to try this out. Speaking of yesterday's video, if you have not seen it already, we did an upload on the Britt Baker drama going on around on social media. Also, we had the tragic passing of Sid Vicious. So if you have not seen that video yet, do me a favor and go check that one out. Like the video, please. You guys have done fantastic on all of the above. You guys liked, subscribed, all of that stuff. Let's keep up that same momentum. Can you guys like this one? Subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed already. Share it with someone. That helps as well. We have to please the algorithm gods of YouTube. So it would be much, much appreciated, guys. Thank you so much. Follow me on social media. Follow me at Shottown Smart on X, at The Real Shottown Smart on IG. You can see my tags right there on my lovely, luxurious desk. Appreciate you guys so much. Let's start getting into it. Before we do, though, a little programming note. This Sunday, this Sunday, we were supposed to be looking into doing a collab with JD and Ross from Kicking It With Ross. I'm not sure if those plans are still here because, unfortunately, Ross has had a death in the family. His grandmother has passed away, and he is dealing with that. So first and foremost, Foremost, I want to give my my best, um, my condolences to Ross and his family. I um, hope you guys are well, and I'm I'm very very sorry for your loss, guys. So we're gonna, we're gonna do uh, things a little bit differently. Oh, also by the way, I'm going to All Out. I will be at All Out in Chicago, so if you are gonna be there. Anywhere in the area, hit me up, man. Maybe we can hang out, go chill, grab some to drink. Who knows? So we're going to do this format a little bit differently than what we normally do. We're not going to get into the details of the match and everything like that. I'm assuming you guys have already seen that. So we're going to have a little fun with it, all right? We're going to have a little fun with it. It's not going to take all day. It's not going to be a long, drug-out video. We're going to get to the to the gist of it, have some fun with it, and see how that one goes. So let's get into it, man. I appreciate all of you who are watching right now. Start off the show. We get the Judgment Day, a group with no leaders. They come out led by Finn Balor. Balor proceeds to do heel stuff by throwing to a video package. Ooh. There we go. What a jerk, right? Uh, they show a recap of last week's beatdown of the Terra Twins. Balor says they got what they deserved. There is more of that to come at Bash in Berlin. Liv says her and Dom are always on top. That sounded better when Mommy did it. Uh, LWO comes out with Dom's little brother, Ray Ray, who's wearing a mask that literally says mask on the side. So he doesn't forget what it is, I guess. Ray Ray gets the mic and he says that Rhea Ripley has a set and Dom doesn't. And due to the things that I've personally been thinking about Rhea Ripley, I really hope that he means boobs. Ray says someone needs to put Dom in his place. Seems like a job for his father. And since we all know Eddie is dead, Ray is still being a dick. Ray insults the stash. And that's enough for J.D. McDonough to kick this party off because he, no one disrespects the stash, apparently. Dragon Lee, yes, he still works here, hits an assistant plancha to knock Judgment Day straight into the commercial break. 
we get LWO versus Judgment Day in an eight-man tag match. Judgment Day gets the W as Dom pins his little brother again with the help of Liv. Very good opening match. Post-match, Judgment Day continues the beatdown of LWO. Ray Ray is put on the announce table. Dom goes to the top ring post, but the Terra Twins music hits. Priest and Ripley show that they give zero fucks about Dom's little brother because they come out slowly, stop, pose, look at each other, take off their jackets, and then run down to the ring. No rush. Take your time, guys. Take your time. Priest kills Carlito immediately. Rhea chases down Liv and slams her head onto the table that Ray was just laying on a second ago. Then she slams her into the ring post and got into the ring to surround Dom with Priest on the outside because Dom, for some reason, was still standing on that ring post waiting to jump down to kill his father. The Terra Twins beat down all of the Judgment Day by themselves because somehow the LWO completely vanished as soon as Priest and Rhea's music hit. Great stuff. Um, I do believe that we get a one-on-one match between Liv and Dom Dom. Liv and Dom Dom. Between Rhea and Dom Dom at some point. We cut to the New Day. Kofi says, the best thing about the New Day is if we have an issue, we can talk to each other. Wood says, yeah, that's why we're almost 10 years strong, because we communicate. Like when you tagged, when you didn't tag me last week. It got awkward. It got weird. Yep. Everything's fine here. Everything's fine in the New Day. Nothing to see here. Damage Control versus Pure Fusion Collective. The crowd didn't care about this match, nor did I. The only thing the crowd cared even less about was the surprise attack from Zelina Vega to DeVille. I think they actually somehow got even quieter during that attack. Kabuki Control with an insane elbow to Zoe Stark. I love you, Eo, and I'm so sorry for looking at Mina. I will never do that again. Drew McIntyre comes out to continue doing what he does best, trolling CM Punk. Drew says that Punk likes to talk about his favorite topic, CM Punk. We later find out that Punk was streaming live on Instagram from under the ring. That's PG Punk for you, man. Punk comes up from under the ring with a strap to get the jump on the Drew. Punk gets two swings in on Drew before Drew gains control making Punk's entire adventure under the ring completely pointless. Punk regains control, though, and chases McIntyre off to stand strong. Then we get a video package of Bronson Reed resetting the days without an injury counter right back to zero repeatedly. Jay Uso versus Kofi Kingston versus Karrion Cross in the Intercontinental Championship number one contenders tournament triple threat match. Jay Uso wins clean with an Uso splash to advance. Nothing special here. No other story advancement. Randy Orton makes his way to the ring. He looked like he wanted to slap the hell out of some kid who wanted an autograph, but then didn't give him a pin that worked and then wouldn't hold his sign and then wouldn't let Orton go. Orton's music is still playing. I was pretty sure Orton was going to slap that kid at some point. But he didn't. He didn't. Babyface Orton. He didn't call him stupid, stupid, stupid. Orton thanks the crowd for singing his music and then immediately turns heel on them for taking 15 years to do it. Orton said Orton things about Gunther, nothing exceptional, just another great Orton promo. Bronson Meat versus Braun Meatman in a battle of who has the biggest meat. Sponsored by Arby's. After the break, this match spills into the outside. Literally, they they end up in the parking lot. The brawl essentially ended when Reed hits a tsunami onto Strowman on top of a rigged Cadillac that made some unnecessarily lame smoke and sparks. 
This was far and away the best thing on the show. Awesome spot. Um, I'm guessing the match was a double count out. It was never addressed. Xavier Woods versus Miz versus Pete Dunn in the Intercontinental Championship number one contenders tournament triple threat match. We have a match of different styles here. We have Woods, the technical high flyer. We have Dunn, the brawler. And we have Miz, the undisputed king of soft style. Dunn wins with the bitter end to Miz to advance, leaving both Woods and Kingston out of the tournament. Main event, we get Chad Angle versus Bo Wyatt, a.k.a. The Fiend's uncle. This serves as Bo's in-ring debut since returning to the company. He was, he, he, it, it was time to see if, if, if this high priority gimmick that is the Wyatt six had any, had any work rate behind it and going up against a Matt technician like Chad, that would he, that would either leave Bo to sink or swim. But people seem to forget that Bo is a former NXT champion, the third NXT champion, as a matter of fact, and he, Bo can go. It was a decent match with all of the expected Wyatt Six and American Made shenanigans with Bo picking up the win. And that is the end of the show. So let me know down in the comments, guys. What did you guys think of the new format? Are you a fan? Are you not a fan? Would you rather have the live? I would actually love to hear it. Please let me know in the comments. Don't forget, share the video. Hit that thumbs up, please. Super thanks down below if you are so inclined to be greatly appreciated. I will see you guys tomorrow on JD's channel for the AEW Dynamite review. Can't wait. I will see you guys then. Take it easy. Peace.